Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week, we are again looking at different forms of broadcast mixing. Last week, we were at Rise Church in Jacksonville, Florida, looking at using a DAW rig, uh, so using a Mac Mini running uh, Logic Pro as a broadcast mixer. Uh, this week, still in Jacksonville, but we're at Chet's Creek Church uh, and looking at their rig where we are using a Behringer Wing and kind of a hybrid system where it's a Behringer Wing plus an iMac running uh, Waves Super Rack with a bunch of Waves plugins. So I apologize for any shakiness on my part, but uh, again, here we are at Chet's Creek Church. They have a Behringer Wing at front of house, and then this is the one we're looking at in broadcast, uh, and that is running a hybrid system with um, an iMac running Waves Super Rack and a bunch of Waves plugins on there. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is uh, kind of how all this stuff connects some of the pros and cons of that, uh, and some of the uh, intricate math that I have to do to make this all work the way I want. And, and a lot of that's more my fault than anybody else. Um, so we talked about the pros and cons of a DAW rig and how um, some of the cons were you had to kind of work hard to make it uh, a little bit more flexible, a little bit quicker to get around. So on something like the Behringer Wing here, it, some of the pros, it's very, very easy to get around. Everything is set up in banks of faders that are customizable. So this user one page over here um, has basically all of our instruments that we're going to, you know, probably need during a service. So between user one and user two, we're going to have everything covered as far as our channels. Um, over here, user one is all of our DCAs. So drums, keys, guitars, tracks, band, vocals, and vocal effects. Uh, and then over here, our user one is all of our transitionary elements. So the aux is the um, music playing front of house. PC3 is the mono channel of the videos coming from front of house. And then we've got headset one, the lead pastor, and uh, mic seven, which is the MC mic. That's all the speaking and not singing coming through there. Um, and so we can very easily move around and customize this however we want. There's tons of customizable buttons and knobs and screens to tell you what's going on with what. Um, if you watch some of my older videos um, from a few weeks ago about the wing, um, I've had a lot of chance to use it since making those, and I'm really, really happy with it. If we had to use this console without the Waves goodies, we could do it. Um, now, I like the Wave stuff because when we were in the early stages of COVID, uh, using some of the Waves plugins, especially for our mastering and our drum bus, uh, as we're going to talk about in a moment here, um, helped us to maintain the sound that we had uh early on when we were using logic for our mixing. Um, but now we have the best of both worlds here. Um, but all that to say, again, one of the things I really like about the, the way the Behringer is going on here is that you can use something like, for example, um, let me pull you up a mix here. We're going to talk about this in a little bit. This is our, our Spanish translation mix. And we are using on this particular mix, the built-in um, precision limiter, which is a brick wall limiter instead of the wave stuff. And we'll talk about that in a little bit here. Um, and so as long as you have at least one of these in here, you could use this console on its own and it would actually be a pretty formidable broadcast console. Um, but we'll, we'll get to that more in a little bit here. So let's talk about the way everything is connected. Um, so, uh, on the back of the console, uh, there are some different connections. There are three AES-50 ports. Um, that is the main style of communication for Behringer and Midas consoles. It's a, uh, a shielded Cat5 or uh, a shielded Cat5 connection. Um, and uh, there's a USB port um, that we're going to talk about in a little bit here. Uh, and there will eventually be some other cards that you can swap out for. Um, but those are the two main ones we're going to talk about today. Um, so what is happening is, again, we have a front of house wing as well. as, as well, um, And that is uh, sending us a signal through our AES-50A port. 
And then before we even touch any of the actual channels, it is being routed from uh, the A input through the USB output uh, into our super rack on here. And the way we have super rack set up is every single channel has the same input as it has output. Um, so uh, you should be able to see that there is on say the kick drum, we've got the input is wing input three and the output is wing output three. And so that's how everything's getting in and out of our computer on here. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, Chad, why are you using the USB card instead of the Waves card or a Dante card? Well, the answer is simple. As of this moment, today is September 1st um, of 2020, an interesting year to be alive. And there is not yet, unfortunately, um, a Waves card. But... That's not a big deal for us um, because, because in Super Rack, uh, we are using a very high buffer size of 1024, uh, and we are purposely incurring some extra latency because in the end, the end user is going to hear it with latency no matter what because it still has to go through YouTube and be processed by their phones and all that kind of good stuff. So to create less strain on this iMac, because again, it's not a super um, souped up iMac, by purposely inducing latency, um, we can give it a little bit of less strain and, uh, and be able to work on things a little bit easier. So that's going to become really important in a moment here. So what I want to talk about is the signal path that two channels are going to come through. So we're going to just for this situation, we're going to talk about the kick drum and the bass guitar uh, and how they make it all the way through. So as I mentioned earlier, the kick drum is going to be plugged in on stage. It gets sent to us from front of house. Everything is synced up at that point. Um, so when it hits our console on AS50A, we are then sending it through the uh, USB connection into the iMac, uh, and then the iMac is you know, doing some different processing on those channels and it's then sending it back to us. So first off, if we look in the patch window, you can see we have this thing called latency groups. And the very top there, we have drums and I have the kick, snare top, snare bottom, tom one, tom two, and tom three um, highlighted in that group. So what that means is that whatever our highest latency inducing plugin is in those group of seven channels, um, will be applied to all the channels that they line up um, when they come out of Super Rack and come into our wing console. Now, when they come into the wing, they're coming in at the beginning of the signal chain. So Waves is the very first thing that processes it. And then from there, we can process the individual channels with whatever kind of EQ or uh, compression or whatever it is that we want. Uh, now, all of my drums are then going to a drum group called drum heads. So again, this is kick, snare top, snare bottom, toms one, two, and three. Uh, it does not include the cymbals and it does not include the drum pad, uh, a, a Roland SPDX that we have set up. This is then going back to waves and here's how we're doing it. Uh, on the screen, you can see here that first insert point, we're using the external effects um, plugin um, that is sending out USB uh, 39 and 40 and coming back again on USB 39 and 40. Now think about this for a second. So the kick drum has come into the board with the bass guitar. They have both hit the iMac and then come back into the board. And now the uh, kick drum's going through a group, hitting the iMac again and coming back for a second time. If you listen to the kick drum and the bass guitar playing like quarter notes uh, right on tom time with each other, you would hear that the kick drum is going to be slightly behind in time than the bass guitar um, because it's going through more processing before it comes to the, the board to rest again. So here's how we fix that. If you notice up here in the latency groups, um, underneath drums, we have drum bus, and then we have very aptly named not drum bus. 
Now, I've gone through and done some uh, extensive testing and found that generally the uh, round trip latency that we get from that second extra trip is 2339 samples. Those are samples, not milliseconds. So that's basically a half of a millisecond. And I wrote it on the screen just so I could have a reference. So what I'm doing is I'm taking that number, 2339, I'm adding it to the drum group, which is 214 samples, and the drum bus, which is 213 samples. And those numbers all together come out to 2766. So through some thorough testing, I can tell you that 2766 is how many samples it takes to make sure that the, the kick drum and the bass guitar are exactly lined up when they come back together in the board. Now that everything's lined back up in the console, uh, we can mix all of our channels as we see fit, and then they all feed into two subgroups we have here. We've got a band subgroup and a vocal subgroup. Now those two subgroups combine with our speaking mics and our playback mics uh, channels. So like I said over here, our aux, PC3 um, headset, and um, our talk, or sorry, our MC mic, uh, and those then all go to our Main mix, which right here is main mix one, which we've labeled stream. Now the stream mix, just like we did with the, um, the drum bus, uh, is using an external effects. And by going through USB 47 and 48, we are sending and returning back to waves for a third time for some of these channels. So all those hit our mastering then they come back into the console and then that stream mix is what's being sent to um, the uh, Blackmagic ATEM switcher, uh, which is what's feeding our YouTube and Facebook feeds. Now, one of the really cool things about using console, we have really extensive routing options. So while that stream mix is what's going out over the internet, uh, there are times when I'm going to want to hear additional things uh, for the sake of communication uh, that I do not want going out over the stream. So the main mix, main mix one, is what's going out over the stream. Um, but what we are hearing in the studio, uh, we have the same speaker set up as we had at Rise, so a pair of Yamaha HS80s, and then we have a KRK 10-inch sub, All that is being fed by Matrix 1, which I forgot to label. Um, so what's happening is Matrix 1, because a Matrix is a combination of mixes, Matrix 1 is receiving stream uh, mix, which is main mix 1, and it's also receiving the comms channels, um, which is a secondary mix that I made that is only the communication things that we need between songs. Um, so this includes uh, the music director's microphone, the click track, the Q track, my talkback microphone back here, and the talkback microphone that the front of house engineer has. All that is going into uh, that uh, third main mix there, and that is being fed into the matrix. So if I want to hear those channels, I can unmute them with this button I have set up right here and I'll be able to hear those channels, but they will not affect the stream going out over the internet. Um, now, here's the, the problem with that. Just like how with the drums, uh, we had some channels that were going through twice and some that were going through once, and we had to delay the ones that were going through once to be able to match up with the things that are going through twice. Well, at this point, all of our audio that we're hearing the music director with um, have gone through an equivalent of three times into the Mac uh, and back. So if I were to unmute the music director microphone, uh, his vocal channel, which is picking up the drums or right behind him, will be uh, way in front of the rest of the band um, by about a, a second and, a little, and some change. Um, so we once again have to set up a latency group to make it all match up. So again, in the patch window, um, you can see at the top again, we have drums, drum bus, 
not drum bus, and mastering. And then towards the very bottom, we have a group called MD, which again has music directors, microphone, um, the uh, the click, the cues, and the talkback mics. Um, so by taking the not drum bus number, 2766, adding the mastering number, which is 208, and one more time of adding the round trip latency, 2339, we arrive at 5313, um, which again is just over a second of latency that we're adding to the music director's microphone so that when we hear it uh, combined with our mastering, it's all going to line up to what we're hearing in the broadcast room. So it's a lot of math, but it doesn't really change from week to week unless we make a big change to some of our plugins or some of our buffer size settings. Um, so it's really, once you have it set, you don't have to worry about it. But with a DAW rig, it would do all this math for you. Or if I were to make this a little bit simpler and have all my audio um, hit you know, the same amount of time, uh, that would be another way to kind of handle uh, this instead of making it more complicated. But again, we wanted to have the same um, signal chains as what we had in uh, in our DAW mixing that we we're doing for post-production. So it, it is a bit of a pain, but once you have it set, you don't really have to deal with it anymore. Now let's talk about how the Spanish translations hooked up. As I mentioned earlier, all of our band sums down into the band submix and the vocal submix. That combines with these four channels over here, and, uh, and that's what's going out of the stream. Now, for the S Spanish translation, um, these two are fine. The band mix and the vocal submix, none of that's being translated. We're not going to translate the singing, um, just the speaking. So for what's going out over the Spanish mix, um, the, uh, the headset and the MC microphone are completely turned off. And instead, on another page, we have a translator's microphone that is going to this mix, but not going to the English stream mix. The background music is going to both sets of mixes. And then the PC music, um, because sometimes they would need to hear that in the Spanish mix, and then sometimes it would have interviews and that kind of thing that would be confusing uh, to be in the Spanish mix. So we opted to meet in the middle. We've uh, turned it down by 20 dB. So that way, when like the countdown video happens, um, they'll be able to hear it just fine in the Spanish mix. Uh, but the uh, if someone is speaking English, the translator will be louder than that. And so you're going to still have an easy time understanding the translation. You'll just hear some, some English kind of in the background. Uh, and again, with the way we're set up in this console, as I mentioned on uh, the DAW rig, when you solo something in the DAW rig, it doesn't always do what you want it to do. Like you, it might actually affect what the people online are hearing. That is not the case in this room. If I were to solo the Spanish mix, I would actually hear how all that blends together in this room with no issues. Okay, finally, one last thing I want to show you guys. Um, I'm really proud of how this worked out. Um, we are also recording all of our services onto the same iMac. So it's, it's doing a lot for a standard iMac. It's running all these plugins uh, and it's recording um, 48 channels of audio live. Um, now, the way we're connecting all that is through a different uh, USB port. So we have one of these. This is awesome. This is a Clark Technic DN9630. On the back, we have an AES50 port. And on the front, we have a USB connection. Now, what this basically allows us to do is to have a secondary USB connection to our iMac. So the way all the routing works is uh, the channels are going to the console twice. One's going through Waves, and the other one is going through the Clark Technic. Clark Technic is recording into um, Reaper so that it's unaffected by Waves. When we want to do a virtual sound check, we simply come over to our library, go to routing, and then we can switch to virtual sound check with Waves. And what's happening is it's just rerouting our audio that's going to Waves instead of it coming from our AES50A port, 
is now coming from our AES 50 C port, which is where our Clark Technic DN 9630 is plugged in. This allows us to still use waves when we're mixing a virtual sound check, and then we can simply switch back to the live mode um, and keep all of our settings. So I hope that's been helpful for you guys. Uh, I know it's a lot of math, um, but <laughs> once you get it all set up, it works great. Um, so if you're wondering which one do I prefer, a DAW mix or a broadcast mix, it really just depends. Um, apart from the setup, the actual running of this console uh, has been really easy from what I can see with the volunteers here. Um, we've handed it off to a volunteer team now, and they're not really messing with the wave stuff a whole lot. They're mostly just running what's on the console, and I'm kind of leaving the mastering setup um, that I had set for them. Uh, and it's working really well. Um, both rigs, if you had to do a lot of troubleshooting, would be a little bit tricky and would probably need someone like me to come in and uh, and make some adjustments or maybe a Skype call or something. But um, they're both awesome. It just really depends on uh, what you're trying to do. But I love the hands-on control of the Behringer Wing. I've really been impressed with this console um, since it came out. One more thing I forgot to mention. Uh, when it comes to pricing these options out, um, uh, to give you kind of an idea of what some of the costs would be for this. Uh, last time I checked the Behringer wing was $3,500. Um, the, it comes with, you know, all the hardware you need with the exception of that DN 9630, which is about $370. Uh, if you decide to go that route, um, you know, you need an iMac. Uh, this iMac is a, pretty standard iMac. We did upgrade the RAM. Um, so the iMac I think is $1,100. Uh, I don't remember how much the RAM is. Now you are limited to 16 gigs of RAM in this particular setup. If I had to do all this over again, I'd do the Mac mini, uh, like we did at Rise Church. Um, the plugins are still going to cost you the same. Um, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, the horizon bundle is about three fifty. The um, uh, let's see, you need the the tuning is about fifty, the DBX one hundred and sixty is about fifty, uh, and the F six is about fifty. So it's about five hundred dollars in software, uh, and then you don't need to purchase Logic. You can use something like Reaper, um, which is less than a hundred dollars, um, or uh, well, in this case, you are going to need something that you wouldn't have. Um, so when we, when we're doing our video on logic, we're using a program called studio rack, which is free. This needs super rack, which unfortunately is a paid program. So while you will not need to spend $200 on logic, you will unfortunately need to spend $600, uh, on waves, um, super rack, which is expensive. There are some other alternatives out there. Um, one of them, I, I can't remember the name of them. They were nice enough to send me a demo for me to try. Um, but unfortunately with the, maybe it was because we were on a Mac, but the computer I had, it was crashing like constantly. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't something I could do a video on. If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Um, so for the money, even though it's $600, Waves um, Super Rack is definitely a powerhouse program. Uh, I, I would love it if it did some of the math for me on here, but at least it does the math for the plugins. Um, and it's not its fault that I'm sending audio in and out multiple times. Um, so for what it is, it's a great thing, but do be aware that that's an extra 400 bucks that you probably weren't planning to spend if you're comparing this to a DAW rig. Um, so yeah. Uh, oh, also in the DAW rig, we were, we're using a external, uh, audio interface as a means of hearing what we were doing. Um, that's another thing you will not need to purchase in this case, because all the audio is going to come in and out of your, uh, Behringer wing or whatever kind of mixer it is that you're using. So I think that about covers the main differences between the two. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. So I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. If you have any questions, leave your comments below. Until next time, have a great week.